In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this zipped up pouch. This was a request, so I hope this is exactly what you wanted. Um, it's a double sided little pouch, it's padded, it's zipped, it's finished off with bias binding, that's what attaches the zip. And then on the inside, I've put a few pockets. You can put more if you wanted to. So I've got two pockets on the front here, like flat pockets. I've put a divider down the middle. You can put more of those if you wanted to. On this side, I've got a zip pocket, so this could be for things that you want to keep secure. It could be loose change, it could be a passport, or it could be even for makeup. And I'll give you the measurements, they'll be on your screen, but you can make this in any size that you like. So if you wanted to make a big A4 folder, um, this is around about A5 in size, or even make it smaller and have it as a wallet, then um, have a play with different sizes. It all works in exactly the same way. But the first thing you're going to need to know is what materials you need. So let's get on with the sewing. This is the outside of my case, um, and this measures 14 inches across by 10 inches deep, but you can make that any size that you like. So when it's folded in half, it's going to make a 10 inch by 7 inch folder. Um, I put some fusible fleece on the wrong side of here, so that's the, the wadding or the batting that you iron on, but you could use a spray if you wanted to, to glue it on instead. I've got one piece of lining fabric that's cut to the same size. Um, so that'll be the outside there, that'll be the lining there. And then on the inside, I'm also going to make two pockets. And I've got two pieces of fabric, the same as the outside of my fabric, and these measure 10 inches square, that I've then folded in half, and those are going to go either side of my folder. Now one of these is going to have a zip along the top. So I've got a zip which is about 12 inches long, I like to keep my zips long and cut them down to size and it also means that if you buy a zip that's too long you can cut off the metal stoppers at the end because I don't want to see those and I don't want to sew over them either. So anything that's over say 11 or 12 inches long, even if you've got a 16 inch long zip you can always chop it down. Um, right and then I've got another zip which is long enough, if you imagine this one it's closed, to go all the way around the edge. So I need that to be at least two inches longer on either end because I'm going to put a tab on the end of that piece so I've got something to hold on to when I'm pulling it. So again, nice long zip. I will measure this for you. I'm using um, continuous zip, so this is chopped down to size. But if you're buying a complete zip, then I would say 30 inches. And again, you will be cutting that down a little bit. Then bias binding, I've got some pre-bought three quarters of an inch wide bias binding. And the only other thing I need is a template just to draw around a circle. And I'm using a lid from a spray can of glue, which measures about three inches across. That doesn't have to be exact. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to round off the corners of my case purely because it makes it easier to put bias binding around the curve than having to mitre the corners on each of those four sides. So I'm going to sit the outside on top of the lining so I can cut through all the layers in one go and just use my lid template to just draw a curve around each one of those corners. And I'm using an erasable, erasable ink pen. Um, this is a friction pen, it's heat erasable. Try not to get the heat erasable pens onto your actual fabric because sometimes they can bleach. Um, it's okay for something like this because I'm cutting straight through where the ink mark is and that's going to be within a seam allowance, so you're not going to see it. But do be aware of that. Always, always test with heat erasable pens just to make sure they're not going to affect your fabric. So on a scrap piece of fabric, first of all. Right. So cut around the curve, so all four of those. And then I'm going to use those same, oops, or that same lid, I should say, to make curves on the open side of my pocket fabric. So again, I'll put the two pieces together so I can cut through both at the same time. Right, 
So now let's take the lining section. And I'm going to place one of the pockets over the edge here. And this is one where the zip's going to go across the top. So I take my shorter zip and I'm going to move the slider right out of the way without it coming off. And what I want to do is to have one half of the pocket or one half of the zip on the pocket and the other half of the zip I'm actually going to sew to the lining. So there's not going to be a top top of the pocket, if that makes sense. So let's bring in the machine. If you've got a zipper foot on your sewing machine, then it's a good time to put it on now. If not, a lot of sewing machines, when you're on a straight stitch, you can actually move the needle from one side to another by using the stitch width control. So that's what I've done here. So let's just move that thread out of the way. And I'm sewing the zip face down, so slider side down, straight across the folded edge of my fabric. If you find it easier, if you're a beginner, you may want to pin this first of all, that's entirely up to you. I find it easier sometimes not to have to manoeuvre around pins as I'm sewing on, on simple little things like this. A bit different if it's dressmaking. Right, so there we are. So that's how my zip's looking now. So let's place this over the top of the pocket, um, sorry, the lining, like so. And I'm just going to mark whereabouts that zip is sitting because I'm going to fold it over. So I know that the top of the zip is about here. And again, I'm only marking in the seam allowance with my heat pen. So I'll need my stitch line to be halfway down the tape, which is quarter of a, an inch lower than that. Let's flip it over. Upwards like this. Place the middle of the zip on the mark that I've just made. And it's quite easy to keep straight lines when you've got a, a striped fabric like this. There we go. And again, pin that if you prefer. So this time, I'm going to sew straight down the side of the zip here so that when I flip this over, the end of my zip's looking nice and neat that side. And if I don't get the, the edge of the pocket perfectly matched to the edge of my lining, it's not a problem. I can always trim that down a little bit. OK. Let's move the thread out of the way. This time I'm going to move the needle over to the right hand side. And again, let's sew. So let's just fold this back down again. There we go. So that's going to be my pocket at the bottom. So all I'm going to do now is to put just a few stitches around the bottom here, like tacking or basting stitches, just to hold all of that together while I constrict the rest of the folder. So there's pocket number one. And I'll trim the ends of the zip off in just a second. The second pocket is going to go on the other side here, face down again, edge to edge, pop a few pins in if you like. And this time, I'm just going to sew around the edges. Inside the seam allowance, so I'm just holding the layers of fabric together here. I'm not actually constructing anything. So this is just a tacking stitch. And then back down 
the final side. Now this pocket's going to have a divider down the center. So if I fold the whole thing in half and finger crease it, that gives me my center line. And then I'm going to sew along this line to make two pockets. If you're making pen pockets, you can make those as wide or as narrow as you like. Or if you're keeping something a little wider in there, then of course, just keep it as one pocket. And I've backstitched over the end of my stitch line just a couple of times so that um, that doesn't come undone. OK, so that's how we're looking at the moment. Next thing is to piece it all together. So I've put the zip in here, right, and, yeah, yeah, and then we're going to go all the way around the edge with the second zip. And I put, the, uh, I'm boring you, am I? I put those little bits on the end there, and then I've got the two pockets, and then we carry on sewing. Shall we do that? <laughs> go on. <laughs> right. So just, just talking, bobbing through what we were doing. Um, okay, so those two little bits on the end are sewn on. A little bit wet around the chin. Um, now we're going to put the zip in. So what I've done with the end of my zip is put a mark on the zip three inches from the end, and that's where I'm going to start sewing. So the idea is that one half of the zip will go from the centre point here, and I've marked that, I made a mistake the first time, so that's the actual centre point, and I'm going to sew the zip on first and then put the bias binding on because I just find it easier that way to make sure that everything's in the right place. So I don't want to start sewing right from the centre, I'll start sewing just from one side, so about an inch from that centre point, so that when this is folded over, I've got enough room there for the closure and for the end of the zip to actually poke out. Okay? So again, if you want to pin, <coughs> maybe a good idea. And I'm sewing with the slider on the zip facing upwards. So right from where that mark is, three inches from the end, and to move my needle right over again. So zipper foot, uh, zipper foot, zipper feet on if you have one. Where's my mark gone? There we go. And do go backwards before you go forwards, just to make sure that the zip isn't going to come undone. And then line up the edges of the zip as you sew. Let's move that slider out of the way. And I'm sewing quite close to the edge here because the bias binding is going to go on the top. So careful as you go around the curve. Stop with the needle in the down position if you need to pivot at all. And just bend the zip around. I'll tell you what would be easier if we were doing half a zip at a time. So again, be careful that slider doesn't come right off the end. That's it. So I'm just holding the edges together as I go around the curve. And try and keep, oh come on, try and keep this as smooth as you can. It does want to fight back, but this will be worth it, I promise you. There we go, that's it. And this is why I sew the zip in first and then come to the bias binding afterwards. Because at least I know that the zip is well and truly in place. You may find it a little bit easy if you're having problems going around the curve, just to snip into the side of the zip so it opens out like a fan. Not all the way to the teeth, so just cut about halfway through it, maximum. And you may find that easy just to stretch that around the curved side here. And we go, the needle down. Right, and I'm going to sew this up to the same distance where I started on the first side. So around about, or exactly, um, an inch from that centre mark there. So that'll be here. So when I get up to the spot, I'm just going to reverse backwards and forwards a few times again to make the zip nice and secure. OK, 
Okay, so that's one half of the zip in. And the bias binding is going to cover around all of the seams here as well, so don't worry about um, don't worry about that not looking neat. It will do when it's finished. And then the second part of the zip, just open that up now, needs to go in the opposite direction. Let me mark one inch from that centre line and just in the same way, but this time I'm going to sew the other way around. So let's make sure that that lines up here. So I've got my zip poking out here. When it closes, it should kind of make the two sides of the zip meet right in the centre there, right over the top of that centre mark that I made underneath. And then this half of the zip, I'm going to sew all the way around in the opposite direction till I get back to the other side again. Remember, this is just a tacking stitch. Your, um, your bias binding is, is going to cover over the edge of this. So quite close to the edge. Let's just snip into the zip tape again around the curve. Have a go with that first. If your zip's uh, got a little bit of give in it, it should go. If not, give it a snip. Start with the needle down. Around we go. Just roll this up out of the way. It seems a little bit alien sewing on this side of the fabric when all the fabric's towards this end, because normally it'd be hanging off the end of the machine but I wanted to start sewing the zip in from the same point on both sides rather than turn the whole thing around because that would mean I'm st starting from the opposite side of the zip and there's more chance of the whole thing twisting a little bit. If you start sewing at the same point on both ends of the zip as you go around there, you know that they're going to meet up perfectly when you get to the other end. So, like I said, it may seem a little bit odd sewing from this angle, but um, you'll get a better result, I think, if you do. So again, just coming up to the curve, let's have a snip in here. Okay. Snip that over a little bit. And around the curve. There we go, almost there. I'll tell you what, maybe a little bit easier, because I was saying I, I find it quite difficult to pin things like this, um, because you spend all that time pinning it and then you've got to take them all out before you reach them anyway. So I just like to hold the edges of the zip to the edge of the fabric and the same with the bias binding. But if you've got one of those um, glue pens, like the prim uh, glue pens, like the temporary sticks, you could actually glue this on first of all, that may be a bit easier little bit less fiddly. So glue the zip on, just leave it to dry until it's tacky and then sew over the top. Um, make sure that it is for fabric though when you're using glue like this because you don't want to, um, you don't want to use a glue that's not suitable for your sewing machine. Right, one inch from where that centre was is where I'm going to stop here and reverse backwards and then let's take this off. Let's see what we've got. So, again, that's the inside. When this closes over, I've got my tag down here, which means that, over you go, I can pull the zip around. Just got a little bit of zip caught inside the thread there. That's that. And off that side. 
And it's all sitting nice and squarely because, again, I started sewing the zip in, in that same direction. So what I'm going to do now is to put the bias binding around the edge because that's going to finish it off really nicely. And then I'm going to snip back um, the ends of the zip to the length that I want and just put another bit of bias tape around the edge there to make it neat. Right, it's looking good, isn't it? Where have you gone? There you are. So let's open this back up again. Oh, I've got that one little bit there. That's it. Now then, I don't normally take the bias binding off the roll um, until the end because it just means that I'm not wasting anything. So remember where we put the little strip of bias binding over the edge here? That was to make it nice and neat. And I'm going to overlap that slightly now with the new bias binding that goes around the zip. So with the end of your bias binding, fold it over by about half an inch or so. Place this over the top of that mark that you've just made, your one inch from the edge. And then we're going to sew the fold all the way around the zip. If you can, sew just inside that stitch line that you've already made that held the zip in place. Otherwise, you're going to see those stitches, which, like I said, sew those quite close to the edge. And again, when you come up to the curve, you may find it easier just to snip into that bias tape as it folds over. The bias tape, by its nature, is cut on a 45 degree angle, so you should be able to just pull that round without any problem. So here we go. Again, needle as far over to the left as you can. Just move the end of this zip out of the way. And right on that crease is what I'm going to sew. And this time I'm really going to be careful as I go around the curves, because this is kind of the final stage. So sewing along the crease, line up the edge of your bias tape with the edge of the zip. Stop with the needle down if you need to stop. I'm just going to snip into this curve here because it's not laying very flat and that will help it. That's it. Okay. So really carefully going around this curve now. Stretch that bias tape. Don't pull it too much because you don't want to gather it around the edge. And make sure the zip's out of the way as you sew. Again, line those edges up together. Now this is the little bit where, when I zipped up my folder, these little frilly bits where I'd cut into the edge of the zip uh, got caught in the zip, so I want to make sure that they're flat as I come around here. So fold them back, and again, if you've got a glue stick, that may help. Got nice and flat under there. not in the way. Back down this side. Right, and then when I come back up to my, my dot and where the zip's sewn in here, now I can see exactly how much bias tape I have, so I'm going to cut that about half an inch longer than I need, because this end of the bias tape I'm going to fold over in the same way as I did at the start. So fold that over there, and... So up to the edge, straight across the fold, and stop. Right. So now I need to fold that bias tape over. And just like I did with the little bits here, I'm going to hand sew it from this side. So that's the folded edge over the edge of the bias tape I've already put there, and this I'm going to sew. Now, as you can see, as I'm coming up to the curve, I'm really having to pull the tape over the edge there. 
So there's absolutely no harm whatsoever in trimming back. I've got the bias tape out of the way, so I'm not cutting through it. Trimming back these curves a little bit just to make it easier for myself as I'm hand sewing. So now when I wrap that round, it, it sits a lot nicer. Okay. So I'm going to hand sew all the way around here. That one needs trimming back down there as well. Make sure you don't cut the bias tape. So I've folded that back as I'm cutting. Bit of extra fabric there. And that makes a nice neat edge. And then I'll need to do exactly the same with the opposite side of the zip. And then we'll come back and finish off the ends of the zip to make those nice and neat as well. I'm just coming up to the end of hand sewing around the top. And this is looking really pretty. It doesn't have to look pretty. If you're making this for a boy, maybe it's for a um, no, pencil case for school and things like that. You could just as easily make this out of denim or canvas or a print that's a little bit more masculine than pink starfish. Okay, I like to keep these stitches nice and small and neat as well. Just, I love hand sewing like this. I, just, I find it really satisfying just to make those stitches so small. Okay, so this is where um, the fabric overlaps. So I'm just keeping the fold in my fabric nice and neat uh, as I come up to the end. And when you do come up to the end, if you've got a little bit sticking out, just use the end of your needle to push that inside. So I get a nice neat line here. So you go in there. That's it, almost done. And if you wanted to, just knot that a little bit here. You could sew over the end, in fact I might do that, just to show you. Uh, over the end of the fold of the bias tape as well. If it's folded over enough then you shouldn't need to do that, it won't come undone. But uh, there's no harm in something that's going to be used a lot, having a few extra stitches just to make sure. So just slip stitching again over onto the side where the zip is. Let's tuck the end over here to make that neat. In you go. Like so. One little thread there needs cutting off. And I'll just knot this. Let me take that thread off because that's really annoying me. Just a little bit of thread sticking up there. That's that. I'm just going to make a really nice secure knot into the side of the zip. So, and we'll chop that off. So, that's how we're looking. So now when I close the zip around, I've got an almost finished folder. What I need to do now is finish off the ends of these zips. So I think my three inches was a little bit too long, so I'm going to trim that down by around about an inch just so that it sticks off out from the end of the folder by about an inch and a half, two inches. Let's do the same with this end. So just cut that off to about the same length. You can measure that if you wish. Okay. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of bias tape over the ends of the zip to make that nice and neat as well. So cut my tape to about twice as much as I need. This time, that's not a very straight cut. I'm going to use one of those little glue pens. You'll find these really useful. And I'm going to pop a little bit of glue across the edge. And then fold this over the end of my zip. I think I needed a bit more glue on there. Like so. I'm going to fold the ends in. A bit like wrapping up a present. Another little bit of glue.
just on the end here and then fold that over and I'm just going to pop a clip on there to hold it just while that glue sets a little bit and then sew straight across the end on your sewing machine and then we'll do the same on this side what I'm going to do first here is to hand sew together the ends of the zip because you'll find that easier to hold it together while I'm sewing the end of the um, the bias binding on whoops and I'm using black thread here but that'll be inside the bias binding so you won't see it Okay, so the same again with glue here. Like so. Oops. Fold the ends in. This glue, if you, this is a prim one. Um, and although it's lime green when it goes on, it dries clear. So don't worry. Oh, don't worry about putting uh, or getting rather a lot on there. It's not going to stain your fabric. Over the end. Oh, that's not very neat. Let's do that again. Okay. So that goes on there. Those two ends go over. I think I'm stickier than my fabric now. And then those two ends. Over the edge, that's better. And again, we'll have a clip on there to hold that in place. That should be nice and stuck. That's it. And I'll just sew the ends on my sewing machine. And we're finished. So there we're all finished. I've sewn the end bits on, so let's just make sure that everything works okay. So let's undo this. So inside here again, I've got my two pockets, or I can keep I don't know, cards, business cards, post-it notes, little bits and bobs in there. There's my zip pocket, so I can keep things like pencils, or it could even be for makeup and things like that. And then let's close it up. And there you've got a perfect little travel pouch.